Hey there, nail techs and nail lovers. Courtney here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to prepare and paint your custom press-on nails. So if you watched my other two videos, I told you all of the things that you need to buy in order to make the press-on sets. And in the second video was all of the non-physical um, things that you need to prepare in order to sell them. So if you've got all that done, then you're ready for this step, which is painting the nails. I'm really excited for this because I haven't painted any nails for quite a long time. So I've gone ahead and used my sizing guide from my medium square tips and I've sized up my nails and I've prepared nine of the nails nearly. So I'm just going to show you on the one nail what you need to do to the nail before you start painting it. So you might notice on the free edge of the nails there's a little knob <laughs> um, yeah, a little knobbly bit that sticks off the end there. That's going to need to be filed away. Also, this square is kind of like a rounded square and I don't want that look. I'm going to be wearing these tips so this isn't the look that I want so I am going to be filing that straight. So I'm just using a 100-180 grit file and I'm going to file that completely square and get rid of that little knob. Oh god, how funny. Okay, so I'm just going along squaring that off. Now this is really easy, but if you look underneath of the nail, you'll see that the plastic has kind of curled underneath and you want to make sure that you get all of that out because if you paint that, it's going to cause big problems for you. So try and use your file to get most of the little furly bits of plastic off. And there'll be some on the top as well. Just get all those off so that it's a nice, clean finish. So my nails are a bit crooked and that doesn't look quite straight to me. I suppose on a person with a straight nail, that would be straight but mine isn't, so I'm going to take down this side just a touch so that it looks nice on my nail. Let's check. That looks better. Now, once you've filed it, it's going to be really rough on that free edge and that won't look nice when you polish it. So I'm just using a buffing block and I'm actually dragging it this way so that any little bits that are underneath are gonna get caught up and be brought to the other side where I can just buff them off. <clears throat> just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and nothing is going to cause any problems when you apply your polish. Now, you could go ahead and buff the entire surface of the nail instead of using a base coat. Some people do it this way. I used to do it this way. If you watched my other video that I do, that I did, um, I used to buff them. But now all I do is wipe them with acetone. Okay, so once you have it ready, then you're gonna to wanna to stick it to something because you can't paint it like this, obviously. A lot of people use these fancy little things. I only have one because my son stole the other ones and I'm very lucky to even get this part back from him. So I don't use these anyway, but if you do, it's the same as using a stick, except you use that. So I like these orange wood sticks. They're really cheap and they work just as well as anything. So to stick it onto the tip, I'm going to be using some blue tack. This is actually white, this blue tack, which is kind of funny. So I just get a little piece of it and put it on the stick. I like to use this end rather than that end, but that's a personal preference, completely up to you. So stick your blue tack on and then you're gonna to want to put your nail on. So when you're putting on the tip onto anything that has blue tack on it, you don't want to put it so that it's hanging off that bit, obviously, because that's going to cause problems. You want the whole nail to cover 
the entire piece of blue tack. It gets a bit trickier when you use smaller nails because you need to use less blue tack. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so you just push it on. Try not to let it touch the orange wood stick. You don't have this problem so much if you're using these because the nail completely overlaps the whole thing. So I guess that is a benefit to using these is that you don't have to worry about the cuticle area of the tip touching the wood. But once that's on, you're ready to go. So I'm going to wipe all of these with acetone, just using my lint-free wipes here. Nope. Give it a little squidge and then wipe with acetone. When you wipe plastic tips with acetone, they get a little bit sticky. And so that is all you need for the polish to stick. So we're using the acetone in place of a base coat. That's going to save you products and it's going to save you time. Oh dear, something stuck to my finger. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe all of these with acetone and then I will come back. There we go. These have all been wiped with acetone. You can see that I've got them laid out from the thumb to the pinky and then from the pinky to the thumb. This is how I arrange my tips in the box. Well, this one's the opposite way from pinky to thumb and thumb to pinky, but it's a good visual guide so that you don't get mixed up. So now you're ready to paint. You don't need to use a base coat, so just go straight in with your color. I'm using this color a44. Oh, bloody heck, I just broke that. Oh, never mind. From Blue Sky. It's one of my favorite colors. I have it in a lot of different shades. I've bought it multiple times. So, we're just going to go straight in and start painting. When you're painting these tips, Get all the way up to the cuticle, but you don't want to go over the cuticle. There shouldn't be any polish on the underside of the tip because that will prevent the customer from having full contact with their nail and then it won't last as long. You can do the free edge as well. And that's the first coat. So I'm going to stick these into the lamp as I go along and then I'll turn it on once I have them all in there. I think I can only fit five in this lamp actually. But I'll just stick them in there and then turn it all on at the same time. So on this nail, you can see that I went too far over that free edge there and there's a bit of polish underneath. That's going to cure there and it's just going to look substandard. So I'm taking a little lint-free wipe that I've curled up like that and dipped it in some acetone. And I'm just going to get that off so that there's a really perfect finish for, well, for me. But if I was selling these, it would be for a customer. Okay, so those have come out of the light. I'm going to do a second layer because it's not completely covered them evenly. Um, <clears throat> so the same thing. Just paint the nail and don't let any get over the edges. I do want to mention, however, when you put them in the light, depending on how thin or thick your polish is, sometimes while they're waiting to be cured, it kind of runs off the side and it will pool over here. And when you pull it out of the lamp, it will you'll see that it's not a clean, crisp edge. There's a little bit of something happening there. So you can take a file once it's cured and go along the side there to flatten out any bits that have been cured unevenly. I have to apologize. I apparently have hay fever 
now. I've never had hay fever before in my whole life, but I've been sneezing so much today and yesterday. I can't actually believe how much a person can sneeze. So if you notice this video cuts in and out, it's because I had to stop to sneeze. I feel okay right now, but I guess I should just be grateful that I'm not coughing and having a fever to go along with it. So on the middle finger and the ring finger, I wanted to put some glitter. So I have this one from Blue Sky. No idea what one it is, but I'm going to put that over top of the first coat of polish. Oh, I've used this glitter a lot. It's running out. Come on. Give me some. Cool. I like this glitter with this polish. I'll have to order some more. Now you could do two layers of the color and then a layer of glitter over top of it. Gosh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. <clears throat> Here we go. But I find when you're putting glitter over color, you don't need to have full coverage of the color if you're going to put glitter over it anyway. And then it saves you doing excess coats of polish. Because again, as I mentioned in my first video or my second video, if you're putting lots of coats on the nail or if you're using a builder gel or an acrylic, it's going to make the nails really stiff. And they won't be able to flex. Somebody commented on one of my old videos and made fun of me because I said the nails wouldn't be able to flex and they couldn't help but associate it with like or muscles flexing but that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the bending of the nail but that did give me a chuckle so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this other hand and then I'll come back I'm back with 10 painted nails so once you get your final color coat on you want to check all your nails and make sure watch the reflection of the light and make sure there's no um, bits of dust or where it's not cured properly and check underneath to make sure that you have complete, um, well, you don't have any polish underneath. If you do have some polish underneath, you could use your file or an e-file, but I would wait until you put a top coat on because then it will be sealed and you can handle it. So I'll just check. All these some of these are going to need to be filed a little bit once I put the top coat on oh and that one has a little piece of glitter that's stuck I can get rid of that right now good This one has a little piece of polish on the side here. That's going to cause a lump. So I'll get rid of that. And this one, ugh, when I put it in the lamp, it fell over on its side and it cured like that. So you could just get a new nail and do it again. But what you can do is just wipe off the sticky layer, give it a little buff. It's so annoying when that happens. Make sure it's all smooth. Oh, it must have cured upside down because it's just peeling away. If it wasn't peeling away like that, you could just put another layer on. But because that's peeling away, I'm going to have to do another nail. So let me go and do that and then we'll come back and do the top coat. Now then, let's get some top coat on these nails. I'm using a no wipe top coat from Blue Sky. I like this top coat. 
it's quite shiny. Now, I'm going to tell you something about top coat that nobody ever told me. The thicker you put on the top coat, the less shiny it's going to be. I noticed this when I was encapsulating glitters because quite often you need to put a thicker layer of top coat on to like cover the glitter so it's not jaggy. But actually, the thinner your top coat, the shinier it's going to be. So make sure you check the reflection when you get it on and there's no um, imperfections on the nail and there's no hairs sticking off of it like that. There is a little piece on this one side that is a bit jaggy, but I'm going to wait until the top coat is cured and then I will address that. Now, these have all been painted, they've all been top coated, they are cooled down, oh, touched the thing there, sorry. They've been cooled down, so if you touch them, you're not going to ruin the shine on them. This is the time to perfect your nail. Look at it all around and make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. If there's any polish underneath, you can try and use your file although that's quite difficult because it's a straight file. You can get orange wood sticks that have an abrasive file on the end, but I don't have any of those. So I'm going to use my e-file and this um, really gentle cuticle bit to just clean up the inside of that and get rid of that polish. So this one on the edge here has the top coat is pooled a little bit while it was waiting to cure. So I'm going to fix that with my file. I'm not filing the surface of the nail at all because it will dull the shine and I'll need to re-top coat it. So I'm just filing it enough so that it's not jaggy anymore. So on this one, there is a bit of glitter and polish and top coat stuck up there. This is a crucial part of the nail and you really need to make sure that you get that off because that's the part that's going to stick to the client's fingernail and you'll, you won't get good, or good contact. So make sure you get all of that off. Perfect, so those are all ready to be boxed up. Now you can either put them on a card, like I mentioned before, and just put that in an envelope and send to your clients, or you can put them in a box like this. You can put the, the tape that I mentioned before is a mounting tape. It's a really um, sticky jelly-like tape. It's about a, a millimeter thick, so it really does grab onto the nails. I've touched that bit of the tape a few times so it's not very sticky, so I'm gonna cut it off. So you can either put it directly in the box like I have here, but what I would recommend if you're using boxes is to cut a piece of paper that's exactly the size of your box and then you can just put the tape onto that. Make sure that your hands are clean Obviously mine are full of glitter now and I'm just going to peel off enough tape to put the nails on. The nails I want to be quite close together so I'll line them up here roughly how close I want them so I know how much tape I'll need to use. So that's about as close as I want them. 
you don't want to have loads of tape sticking over the edges because then it's going to look a bit naff and it gets dirty and I just don't like the way that looks. So now I try to only put as much tape as I need. So I'm going to start there. Try and keep it straight. And go to there. And then I'll just snip that off. Make sure that it's all pressed down so that when you peel the red plastic bit off, it doesn't pull the tape away. I'm just using my cuticle knife to get that little edge away from the tape. Come on. Off you get. And then I'm going to take all the nails off the sticks make sure that there's no blue tack remaining. Give them a final once over. And then I'll start sticking them on from either side so that I can get good even spacing. If you have a lot of blue tack in the on the inside of the nail, just get a wipe with some alcohol and that will get rid of all that. Well that's gonna have to sit there and dry now before it gets stuck onto the paper because alcohol and glue don't mix well. So they're not spaced perfectly. I'm just going to space each nail out a bit more and find that equal spacing that I want. Okay, so when you have them all laid out, then you're ready to put them in the box. You could make your paper, like you could print off individual pieces that have your logo on them or anything like that and then it just goes in the box. You could even be really fancy and attach a little tab so that the customer could just pull it up and they wouldn't have to go like that. But that's, that's it. So these are ready to be shipped or they're ready to be worn. I'm going to put them on my nails but I need to wash my hands and probably get a drink before I do that so I will leave that with you guys if you have any questions let me know in the comments um, say hello anyway if you don't I love talking to you guys in the comments and I'm getting a little bit lonely with the social distancing so come and say hi and I will come back and show you guys how to put these on with adhesive tabs and also with some nail glue See you later.